In a football-crazed small town like Troy, Pennsylvania, nothing confers more status on a high school boy than being on the football team. And as a varsity football player and wrestler for Troy High School, Greg Congdon was a big man on campus. All my friends were football players. We had a group. Sounds like you were among the cool guys in the school. Yeah, we basically ran what went on in the school. Good place to be, huh? Yep. Yeah. It's always better to be on top than on the bottom. And being on top had its privileges. Screaming fans at home games, the coveted varsity letterman's jacket, and perhaps the most important perk for a male athlete with raging teenage hormones, girls. Did you have pretty much your pick of the girls in the school if you wanted them? All cheerleaders. How did you feel about those girls? Well, I liked them as friends. I mean, they were pretty good as a cover-up. What were you trying to cover up, Greg? The fact that I was gay. And did you tell anybody? No. Why not? <laughs> you just gonna go around spreading off that you're gay, <laughs> especially in my town. Troy, Pennsylvania is a rural town of only 1,500 residents. As in most small towns, news, especially if it's unusual, travels fast. So Greg made the decision early on to conceal his homosexuality, which he'd been aware of since age 12, from his family, from his friends, and most of all, from his teammates. After all, these were the same guys he'd seen humiliate other teammates with gay jokes and slurs. Like they'd be saying that he's such a pussy or such a wimp, and then they'd say, oh, he's probably a fag. And you would feel at that time? It would hurt, but I would just, like, joke right along. So sometimes you'd be making the jokes, too. You had to fit in, because if you show any weakness, they're going to be on top of it. Living with the constant fear of being found out had always gnawed at Greg, but in his junior year, it began to consume him. His mother noticed he was often sick and growing more aloof, but she couldn't figure out why. He had had a rough year the year before in wrestling. He had frequent headaches, which we thought were migraines. Even though you didn't want everybody to know, did you ever think you could tell your parents? I didn't feel like I could tell anyone. Overwhelmed by the burden of a painful secret he couldn't discuss, Greg Congdon decided in early 1998 that there was only one way to ease his pain, to kill himself. I guess I just finally broke down inside. All the jokes, saw the stereotypes, saw the hiding and everything. That night, without leaving a suicide note, Greg swallowed a bottle full of pills he found in his mother's medicine cabinet. After being discovered, he was rushed to the Troy Community Hospital emergency room. There was a doctor, the ER nurse, and a cop. They kept asking me why I tried to commit suicide. They said everything was under confidentiality, so I told them that I was gay. And they, the nurse wrote it on my chart. But when Greg's mother, Joanne, arrived to see him, he still wasn't ready to open up to her. She later searched her house for clues that might explain the suicide attempt, and she finally found the answer on the family computer when she noticed links to gay teen websites. Initial reaction? I was relieved. My son had tried to kill himself. This was something I could take care of and I could live with with him being gay. What about your husband? My husband had a hard time with it. Um, his reaction was, oh, no, not that. Once out of the ER, Greg received a visit from his mother in the psychiatric hospital. She approached me at the teen psych ward and told me that no matter what, she loves me, I'm still her son. How much did that mean to you? A lot. I'll probably never forget that. With unconditional support from his mom and growing acceptance from his dad, Greg returned to school facing a critical decision, whether to come out to anyone there. But he never got the chance. The night before he was to go back to school, Greg's best friend called and said he knew he'd attempted suicide and why. He found out through Kyle Smith. The Congdons think Kyle Smith, the starting quarterback for Troy High School, who'd been one of Greg's closest friends, found out Greg was gay through Kyle's mother, a billing secretary at Troy Hospital. The Congdons believe she came across Greg's confidential medical records and told her son Kyle. What Greg knows for sure is that when he went back to school, everybody knew. He didn't even come out himself. That was the worst part. Someone yeah. else came out for him. 
Carol Westifer and Carrie Holland, former Troy High School cheerleaders, have known Greg and his former teammates for years. And though Kyle Smith has denied telling anyone Greg was gay and none of Greg's teammates or coaches would speak to real sports, Carol and Carrie were amazed at his football buddy's reaction to the news of a gay teammate. They wouldn't even look at him. They had class with him that day. They wouldn't even look at him. They've been his best friend for years. And then they acted like that. You could hear him talk behind my back saying gay, he's a faggot, or even more of the gay jokes, or the name calling, like Bob Pirate, or stuff like that. Were you surprised at how they reacted to you? Not really. I mean, this is why I hid my secret all these years. So I wasn't surprised. Hurt, maybe. Betrayed, yes. With his secret now out, overnight, Greg went from big man on campus to school pariah. He so dreaded coming to school, he spent a lot of his days here in the school parking lot in his car, asleep, wrapped in his varsity letterman jacket. In his free fall from school big shot to social outcast, Greg hit rock bottom the day a former teammate approached him in school with an ominous warning. One of my teammates told me not to play sports ever again or they make my life a living hell. What was going through your mind? Well, I was thinking of suicide again. Why? I just couldn't take it anymore. I mean, I grew up with these kids my whole life. And when you lose everything that you grew up with, it's like, what left do I have? So Greg attempted suicide a second time by ingesting the only medication his mother didn't hide, a bottle full of Tylenol. His mother then took him to a hospital in another town where he stayed briefly. When Greg was having his worst troubles after the suicide attempt, when he's skipping school and doing anything not to go in that building, did you ever hear from the school? No, never. And when I went in and talked to the principal about Greg leaving school, um, he told me, well, we knew he wasn't coming to school, but we decided to give him some space. That's why we didn't call you. So she pulled him out of the school for good. I can't imagine them handling it more poorly. Dan Woog, author of Jocks, True Stories of America's Gay Male Athletes, is an openly gay soccer coach in Westport, Connecticut. I want defense to learn Woog was a closeted high school athlete as well, and he sees Troy High School's response as a textbook case of what not to do. It's blaming the victim. You're gay, it's your problem. Deal with it. If you hadn't, you know, tried to commit suicide and people found out you were gay, we wouldn't have this problem. That's the absolute wrong way to deal with it. No Troy High School official would consent to a formal interview, but Principal Ed Grantier told Real Sports the school did what it could to shield Greg from harassment and provided him with a home tutor to complete his junior year. But Greg's isolation at school and rejection by his teammates couldn't have been more different from the experience of Corey Johnson, a high school football player who made national news because of his teammates' reaction when told he was gay. I said, guys, I have something to tell you. We've played football for however many years. I'm coming out as an openly gay student in this school, and I'd love your support. They were unbelievable. They were supportive the whole way through. This May, at the Gay Pride Millennium March in Washington, D.C., Corey Johnson praised not only his teammates and coaches, but also his school's gay and straight student alliance. Greg Congdon says he tried in vain to bring a similar organization to Troy High School. When I went back to try to get a gay-straight alliance put into the school, so that way no one else will have to go through what I went through. The guidance counselor told me that they couldn't really put that in because it would affect other people's religious rights. Ostracized by his friends and former teammates, forced to finish his junior year at home with the tutor, Greg figured things couldn't get any worse. Then he heard about a tragic incident that made headlines far away from home, and he was convinced things indeed could get a lot worse. That tragic incident was the brutal slaying of college student Matthew Shepard in Wyoming, killed because he was gay. Growing up in a small town, I was always thinking, well, nothing severe will happen to me. That proved that violence can happen anywhere to anyone. So what'd you do? Really secluded myself. I mean, I wouldn't go out to anywhere by myself. Because you were afraid? Yeah. This fear turned Greg into a recluse, terrified he might be attacked for being gay. But after more than a year of living scared, his attitude has changed. You still have any fear for your safety? I'm not gonna run from these people anymore. I mean, you can't run from who you are, so you might as well stand up for yourself. 
Greg and his parents have filed a lawsuit against Troy Community Hospital and the secretary there for breach of confidentiality, a charge both the secretary and the hospital have formally denied. Meantime, after getting his high school equivalency degree, Greg, now 19, is applying to college and counseling gay teens in crisis. For this, Greg received a surprise honor last month, an award from the Colin Higgins Foundation for Courage in the Face of Homophobia. First, I'd like to thank everyone at the Colin Higgins Foundation. For the, the award came with a $10,000 prize and a trip to the ceremony in San Francisco. When I first started out my journey, I didn't expect to receive any awards, so this was a plus. I mean, it's just a step towards helping other gay teens. Is there anything that can make this right for you? The lawsuit's a huge thing because this would really settle everything in Troy. They're sitting here denying that they ever did anything wrong, and I want to prove that they did.